What if you could be praised for drinking a lot? If you lived in Regency England and were a man, you could be. Hi, my name is Anne and I'm a Regency romance author. So, if you ever wondered what went on and what was imbibed at those raucous dinner parties that Bridget and Heroes attended, I'm here to tell you. First of all, I would like to note here that back then the notion of uh, being immoderate in drink was not considered something saying uh, something negative about your moral character. It did not mean you were weak. Actually, there was even this expression called three bottle man, which meant a man who could imbibe three bottles of port in one day. And it was actually not unusual to have several men like that at your dinner table. Strong port was indeed a drink of choice for Regency Bucks. It hasn't always been like that. During the Seven Years' War and before, during the 18th century, they actually preferred lighter wines. But, again, due to the Seven Years' War, there was a lot of criticism leveled against the upper classes for being supposedly Frenchified and supposedly effeminate, which, again, supposedly, left to their poor conduct in that war, even though they won it. Okay. And uh, that provoked quite a lot of men in the gentry and aristocracy to basically want to prove just how many they were. Hence, they transferred their tastes to port. And things like claret, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, became the drink of choice for women. It was actually served in special claret cups. So I do have to say that uh, Regency women did not adhere to the later Victorian notions of propriety and sobriety either. Quite a lot of them drank fortified wine, such as Madeira. Since port was so very popular among the aristocracy and the gentry, quite a lot of people making a profit from it tried to make even more profit from it by adulterating it with things like raisin wine or a special, well not exactly special, but very popular Spanish wine that had an admittedly metal name of Bullock's Blood. When barrels of port were already in your cellar, the drink had to be first clarified and purified. It could be done through several means. Uh, it could be done with sand, it could be done with skimmed milk, it could be done with salt, or my personal favorite, powdered marble. Now, say you did not like port and you actually preferred Scottish whiskey. Then you were kind of in a bind, because during the wars with France, and most of the Regency period was one war with France or another, uh, the Highland whiskey in particular had been taxed and regulated relentlessly. Because, well, the government needed money for the war, because wars are expensive. However, there was a solution, and the solution was smuggling. Or, at your end, buying from smugglers. We usually think of smuggling as a furtive enterprise by Moonless Night, but actually, due to the popularity of the drink, it became so widespread and so lucrative. Some smuggler gangs actually traveled disguised as soldier squad, and were even preceded by pipers. Our methods were quite ingenious, and if you are interested in this topic, I can do a separate video of, on um, Regency whiskey smuggling one day. It was actually quite interesting. And buying from smugglers was not some sort of shadowy, rare, illicit... Well, it was illicit, but it was not that illicit. Enterprise uh, done in dark alleyways. Even Parson Woodford, with an E at the end, who was this famous diary writer, uh, once recorded in his journal that he had this quiet family evening and then he heard the call of a smuggler he knew outside the house so he knew the goods have arrived and he went out and bought them. Not all drinking took place at fancy dinner parties though. Say you were a younger son of the gentry and you had to go into the navy. Then it was probably safe to assume you would drink some rum or a watered-down version of it called grog. Grog was actually called Grog because the admiral who introduced it to the sailors wore this coat that was called a grogum coat. And uh, when he passed by, his crewmen were like, oh, here goes old Grog. So that's how the name stuck. The popularity of rum was actually in large part due to pirates. It took decades, but eventually the higher-ups in the navy noticed that uh, pirates drank rum to avoid scurvy. And also that, as they put it, the drink made their sailors a little bit more bold. So they decided, we'll have some of that. 